Hello everyone and welcome to Facebook Friday. We will get started momentarily. I'm just going to give a second for the video to connect here on Facebook. So if you are watching the video live, I'd love it if you would say hi in the comments below. Um, if you're watching on replay, definitely let me know you're watching um, as well. And if you're watching over on YouTube, please leave a comment to say hi. I am slowly and surely trying to build my YouTube channel and um, after this video is done on Facebook, I will post it, post the replay over on YouTube as well. So welcome everyone. I, like I mentioned, we'll get started momentarily. I am, I'm just going to share this over to my group real fast. So I know it takes a minute to get connected on Facebook Live. I see some folks are joining, so I'm excited about that. So say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And... We're going to have some fun today. All of this stuff right here is going to make a card. And here's what's cool. None of it technically coordinates together. So we're going to see what happens. Um, <laughs> so, okay. That shared. All right, cool. I see that people are joining. Okay, let me refresh this real quick. Okay, looks like we had a little hiccup in the connection. Hi, Shirley. Okay, good. I always wait for those first comments to pop in. That's how I know we are good to go. Hi, Carol from Spring, Texas. Carol, is it just as hot in spring as it is over here? Oh my goodness. Can't take it. This triple digit temperatures are too much. <laughs> it's warm. So we have just been laying low. Hi, Katie. Hi, Denise. All right, guys. All right, well, we are connected. Let me go ahead and introduce myself. Um, I would like to start out by saying thank you so much for joining me for Facebook Friday. My name is Anne Marie Heil, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in San Antonio, Texas. You can find me on my blog at stampinann.com. I also want to bring your attention to the description of this video, whether you're watching um, on Facebook or you're watching the replay over on YouTube. I will have all the information in the description. What you'll see up there is um let's see i always make sure i have everything um so there's a link to my stampin up online store so if you see some products that you love and you'd like to order today um you can definitely click a link and pick up what you need um there's a host code up there with some information i also have it posted here if you shop with my host code and spend over 35 dollars um you'll get a free pdf tutorial from me i'll send you that via email um as well as a thank you card and all that good stuff too um if your order goes over 150 dollars don't use that host code though make sure you're choosing me as your demonstrator don't use that host code i'll still send you the tutorial you'll also get another free gift from me as well um there's also links to join my team subscribe to paper pumpkin my blog which i have right here um and links to follow me on instagram and also on my youtube channel so um i am like i mentioned growing my community over there so i would love to have you subscribe okay here's what we're going to do today today is in the description of the video i called this a mashup medley Friday. We are going to do something really kind of fun today. This whole stack, we're going to make a card out of it. None of it coordinates. So we're going to see what happens. Let me move this host code since you've got it up above. Let me show you what we're creating with today. Then we're going to do a prize drawing and then we're going to start stamping. Okay. So here's what I have for you today. I'm going to lay the scene for you. Okay. We're going to be using artistically inked um, these are all products in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog, too. So we're going to be using the Artistically Inked Stamp Set, the Forever Flourishing Dies, which are these right here. We are going to be using the Timber 3D Embossing Folder. I'm laying this all out so you guys can see the picture. Um, <laughs> I also have the Tea Boutique Designer Series Paper which is, it coordinates with the new tea stamp set. Lots of new in colors are featured in there. So, sorry, all my scraps are in here too, so you get to look at everything. And then we're also going to be looking at the gold and rose gold metallic specialty paper. We've got some crinkled seam binding, and we got a, a, like a punch, um, a, pe a, a Stampin' Blend marker 
and an ink pad. So I'm not going to pull all that in. But this is what we're creating with today. This looks really weird, right? What is she doing? <laughs> she can't be making anything pretty with this combination. Well, what I wanted to show you today was just a way to kind of look around your craft room um, and look at products that don't necessarily coordinate together and see what you can come up with to thanks Diane she likes my blue fingernails I painted my nails the other day and I was really kind of I'm kind of like loving it again I got I was for a while and then I got away from it uh, now I like it again so <laughs> so we'll see so it's blue it's fun all right so any guesses what do you guys think of this combo are you thinking yikes what are we making with this? <laughs> so I'm going to let you think about that for a second. I have prizes. So the last Facebook Live I did last Friday was with this adorable little cherries card. Sweet birthday wishes. Wishing you a sweet day. So this was a card we made last Friday. If you didn't watch last Friday's Facebook Live, you can catch the replay here on Facebook. It's also posted on YouTube. So you can watch it over there as well. Um, so what I do every week is for everyone who takes a moment to share the video, I put their name into a drawing to win the card that I make live on the video. So you'll have until the time I go live, until the next time I go live, to get entered to win. So whether you're watching the replay or you're watching live, just let me know that you shared and you'll have an opportunity to be in the drawing to win the card. It's just a way to get more people watching and I do appreciate your support with that. So this was the card we made last week. And for everybody who shared, I put your name into a hat. And Debbie Schult, you are the winner of the cherries card. Debbie, I don't, I had to second guess myself because I thought I have your address, but I couldn't seem to find it. Um, maybe I don't. It's just easier. <laughs> If you would just send me an email, um, I, it's just a lot to sift through sometimes. So if you could send me an email to annemarieheil at gmail.com, um, send me your mailing address and I'll pop this little cutie in the mail to you and congratulations. And then because this card was so bright and fun, I went into my stash and I pulled another bright and fun card with one of my favorite bundles that I'm so sad is not carrying over the cute little rainbow bundle <laughs> so I made this cute little card with the rainbow and it's kind of a fun little fun fold it's just got fun polka dots it's bright and cheery I don't know I really like this one I hope the recipient likes it too so for everybody who comments on the video so if you leave a comment and interact in the video you're entered to win another card as well so Cliffy Todd Wilson you're the winner of the rainbow card. Congratulations. And as mentioned, I just need both of you to drop me your mailing addresses to this email address. You can message me here on the Stampin' Ann page as well if you'd like, but email is the best option. It's a lot easier for me to keep track of. So if you just drop me a quick email, I'll pop these little cuties in the mail to you and you have some happy mail that you can use or you can send off to someone you love. All right, so Debbie, Cliffy Todd Wilson, please send me an address and I'll get these in the mail. Same thing holds true for today. The card that I make with our little mashup medley of product is, is going to go to one person who shared and then I'll have a second card for somebody who, um, who leaves a comment. I just looked on my, I looked to the right of me and my dog Dakota, she must have had a hard day. She's on her back sleeping with her mouth open snoring <laughs> she's out you guys so i guess she's pretty relaxed i guess the heat finally <laughs> got to her <laughs> okay so what do you guys think are you ready to make a card let's do it where's my my guts okay so i prepped some stuff so I showed you what we're going to use, which is this weird hodgepodge of product. As mentioned, if you're just joining, we've got ferns, artistically inked, the timber embossing folder, some gold and rose gold paper, and then the tea paper. So what's, what's going to come out of this? Let's see. Um, and the reason I decided to do this today is I get a lot of people who ask me, um, like, how do you just like how do you design a card like what's your thought process designing so i thought it would be fun to kind of share that today so if that's your cup of tea i think you'll enjoy this video um you know if you want something with 
you know, just a coordinated set. That's not going to be the video today, but I do have other videos like that. So, <laughs> but we're just going to kind of play. This is our mashup medley Friday, if you will. Okay. So I pulled some, pulled some stuff. I'm going to go through measurements and I'm also going to, I have a little sheet where I have them written out as well. And you, I'll post, I'll put that up at the end and you can, if you need to take a screenshot, if you, if the measurements are your jam. Okay. Hi, Sonia. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. So we're going to start out with a crumb cake card base. There's something here. So I think that's going to be the front of our card so we can cover that up. There's a little dot there. So we're going to do a crumb cake card base that's five and a half inches by eight and a half inches scored at four and a quarter. Burnish that fold. We're ready to go. Okay, next up, I'm going to do, we're going to get this, this first layer done because this is easy peasy. We're going to do crumb cake, petal pink, basic white, and then we're going to be moving in our gold and rose gold. What do you guys think of the color combo? Kind of weird and neutral, right? Not as bright as that paper. <laughs> you guys are probably thinking, oh, she's going to use that tea paper. It's all bright and cheery. Well, you have a bright side and then you have kind of this petal pink neutral side. So that is what we're doing. We don't need these yet. Okay. So we have petal pink. Hi, Taya. How are you? Thanks for sharing, Diane. All right. Okay. Card base. We have a petal pink layer that is five and a quarter by four inches. We're going to have a basic white layer that's five and one eighth by three and seven eighth. So we're going to do a one eighth inch border between these two. And then this one's going to be a quarter inch between the petal pink and the crumb cake. Okay. And then we're going to have a piece of the designer series paper. Again, we've got this one side that has, I love this pattern. So it's really hard for me <laughs> to cover this one up because it's one of my favorite patterns in the pack. Um, but we're going to use the petal pink gingham side. And this is five and one eighth inches long by two inches tall. Okay. So this is just going to be the core base of our card. Now we got to move in one of our ingredients, one of our mashup ingredients. So the Timber 3D embossing folder, I'm going to emboss the basic white layer. Okay. So I am not going to bring my big cut and emboss machine on the camera for this. So hold tight. I have everything ready to roll. I'll be right back. And I'm back. I had that all set up today. <laughs> Hi, Pam. How are you? Okay, so this is just going to add some really fun wood grain texture, just kind of mixes with that gingham pattern, and it's just kind of fun, okay? So, so far in our mashup, we've used the 3D embossing folder and the Tea Boutique DSP. We still have couple more things to use. <laughs> so let me assemble this part because this is this actually comes together really easily. So we're going to put these pieces together so we can set it aside and then work on some of our other stuff. And like I mentioned, this is just, I'm not going to tell you guys that I'm gluing these layers together. I'm pretty sure you can, can see that. <laughs> so I'm just going to chit chat while I'm gluing. Okay. Um, so what I like about this is this is just a really fun way. I love, one thing I love about Stampin' Up! is that we have so many fun, like coordinating suites of products and things like that. But sometimes it's so fun to just dig around your craft room and pull out things and make something with them. <laughs> they might not necessarily go together, but sometimes you might be able to create a fun little masterpiece with just some of the things that you have hanging around in your craft room. So that's what I want to encourage you guys to do in today's video is look outside the suites and look outside the coordination sometimes and see if you can come up with something that's just super cool with some different product. So I don't know. I like to do that sometimes. I forget about, um, oops, upside down. I forget about some things in my craft room, like I'm sure we all do. So sometimes it's just nice to pull things out and and see what you can make with them. Hello, Terry. How are you? Okay. Okay. So how does that sound? You guys like what we're doing today with this mashup? I think it's kind of fun. Normally I try and stick to a sweet, but today I just, I don't know. It's feeling a little 
feel a little feisty on Friday. I wanted to kind of shake things up a little bit. So we shall see. Nora's watching from work. Hi, Nora. How are you in Bellingham, Washington? I think I may have told you this before, Nora. I used to live in Spokane many years ago. I love the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> so it's, and you live in Bellingham. You live in a beautiful area on the western side of the state. But we loved our time there. Okay. Okay. Now, I also have, well, we're not going to, we'll do the inside at the end. Um, so here's this. I'm going to put these measurements up here real quick for you guys. Um, I know sometimes people like them. If you want to get a screenshot, here you go. I'll hold it up. And if you're watching the replay, you can always take a screenshot of this if you want to, but those are the measurements, okay? So next up, we're going to need a couple little things. The only other things I've measured are, I'm gonna use a piece of petal pink for my sentiment and then this little tiny strip of gold. So my petal pink is three and three quarters. It can be a little longer if you want it to be. It's fine, we can trim it down. I always say go longer and trim it down if you have to. <laughs> and then this piece of gold, you can clearly see this is not three and three quarters by one quarter inch. It's a little bit longer than that, but the quarter inch is what you want. Okay, so if it's a little bit longer, you just kind of want a little one quarter inch scrap and a little one half inch scrap. Okay, so we're gonna save those for a minute. Now, we're gonna, we have to get our next mashup uh, item in here. We're gonna pick the Forever Flourishing dies. And I love, hi, Anne. Oh, no worries. We're just, we're having fun. We're making, we're making a fun little card today. Okay, so this stamp set, Forever Flourishing, goes with the um, Forever Fern, I think is the name of the stamp set in the annual catalog. But I love this set of dies because there are a lot of standalone dies in here that are really fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick three that I like to make a little layer with. These, and you can see, these little guys here will all stand on their own and these here coordinate with the different stamps in the set. But I like these. I love layering like foliage and flowers and things like that. So that is what we're going to do. Okay, you're gonna have to excuse me because we gotta move the machine in for a second. So, well, I left this up long enough. So hopefully if you need it, you can go back and watch the replay. <laughs> So I can't leave it there forever. Taya says, I love the Forever Flourishing dies. They are a classic. I agree with you. They are definitely a good standby. And that stamp set is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so I have the mini cut and emboss machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little mishmash of these little um, fern or foliage pieces. So I'm going to start with a piece of crumb cake on the big one, or the largest one will be crumb cake. Okay, and I know you're going to have to get an up close of my hand for a second, so hold tight. And I'm trying not to shake the table, you guys, but I can't control that sometimes. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got this cute little piece right here really fun. Next up, so we use that one. And now I'm going to cut. I'm a rose gold fan. So I don't know about you guys. Are you team gold or team rose gold? If rose gold is a choice, I'm always going to take rose gold. Um, <laughs> but I really like the gold and rose gold together. Um, so I'm going to do my I have two more pieces that I'm going to use here, and I want to do the bigger of the two in rose gold. So I think it's going to coordinate nicely with, oh, that might be a little too big. Is that going to fit? There we go. Kind of squish that in the corner so I have, I maximize my space. <laughs> so, so let me know in the comments below, are you team rose gold or gold? Or do you not have a, or are you team silver? <laughs> I guess there's that option too for metallics, right? Okay. Ah, rose gold. Ah, there's my team rose gold fans. I love it. <laughs> yes, I I love rose gold. There is just something about it. My phone case is rose gold. Carol says she's team silver. Hey, that's okay. 
<laughs> you can be whatever team metallic you want to be. Hey, Lisa Harden, how are you? Happy Friday, my friend. Okay, I probably should have run this through a couple more times. One thing I do want to mention with this gold and rose gold specialty paper, um, it is a little thicker. So sometimes you might need to run it through a couple more times through the embossing machine. It'll come out, just be gentle with it, but, but it is a little bit thicker, so I did forget about that. Um, sometimes when you run it through, you might wanna do a couple passes just to, um, just to get a good cut, but hopefully I don't rip this because I really don't wanna waste it. <laughs> so, okay, so. Ah, we got another another Team Silver. Chelsea is Team Silver. I see rose gold over gold. I love it. Okay, so all these little pieces. So don't do what I just did. Run it through a couple times. I ran it through twice, but I probably could have gone through with another pass or two. It's a really cool paper. It's just a little bit thicker than like a DSP. So, and it kind of is like, it's like fibrous almost. So you just have to be be gentle with it. I got it out. I wrestled it out. It came out eventually. So that's the important thing. Okay. So we used our rose gold. I'm gradually using all of our pieces from our mishmash. Um, and then I'm going to do this little teeny tiny sprig here in gold, just because I love merging different metallic elements. I just think they're really pretty together. Okay. All right. <laughs> that just like catapulted out the end. Oh, well, it came off here. So let's hope I got a good cut because I was going to run it through again, but that came out a whole lot easier. Okay. <laughs> that just shot out of the other end of it. Okay. We'll move that because that's a lot to look at. Okay. So we're working through our mashup of random products. And I'm sorry I, if this bothers you that I'm putting these back right now they're not your dies and I always lose them. So <laughs> I want to keep my dies intact. Okay. So, okay. So we've used just about everything in our little mashup. I have my card interior pieces here. Let's bring our card base back in. So now we're going to need, oh, I already put it on a block. I was so prepared today, you guys. I got everything prepped ahead of time. I don't even know who I am sometimes when I do that. Um, <laughs> so, so now we have to bring in our stamp set into the mix. So we've used our random dies, our tea time paper, and now we're gonna put in the sentiment. And I'm gonna make a birthday card because I don't know about you guys, but I always need a birthday card. Even though I'm giving this away, the recipient can always use a birthday card too. So. <laughs> And I have a little scrap paper here because I think we're going to do something to this um, this here crumb cake fern. It's a little it's a little too clean for me. I feel like we need to we need to rough it up a little bit. Not rough it up, but okay. Let me see. Just let me do a test stamp. Okay. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I get antsy when a sentiment is oh, it's too low i knew i was going to do that oh, the back of this doesn't look good i have rough edges on the back let me smooth them out real quick with my bone folder sometimes if you have a little bit of a raised edge on the back side of your cardstock just go over it with your bone folder that'll just smooth it out and your little oopsie on the front it goes away so this looks like it's pretty low on the blo on the stamp as I was saying, I, sometimes sentiments are really hard for me on um, red rubber because at least with photopolymer, you can see where they're stamping. It's pretty good. We're going to go with it. As you guys know, if I don't like it after the video ends, I'll just go and fix it. But, but it, I, it's just me being a perfectionist, but it'll work. Okay, so... Oh, did I leave enough room on this strip though? Hold on. Yes, I think I did. Okay, so I'm gonna use the banner pick a bunch, which you have to say like that because it's more fun to say. Um, banner pick a punch. And 
for our sentiment. And then I'm also gonna take this little quarter inch strip here, and we're also going to do a little banner end on that one too. Just gonna do some layered banners, okay? Okay, all right guys, so we've got a lot of our components. This little guy right here, he needs, he needs something. He needs a little something, something. So let me grab my soft suede ink again. And we're just gonna put a little, I'm gonna use my sponge daubers and I can't find the sponge dauber color that I need. Where is it? Is this it? Ooh, that sponge dauber is looking a little rough. Might be time for a new one. Um, <laughs> this is my neutral sponge dauber and it, it has seen some things. Look at it. Um, I'm just gonna sponge job a little bit of ink around the edges. Oops, that might be a little too much ink, but that's okay. It's okay. You can distress it as much or as little as you'd like. Every card's probably gonna be a little bit different. Okay. So you've got that. Plus it's gonna dry a little bit lighter, so I'm not too worried about it. And another thing I would really probably like to do with this is go over it with some Wink of Stella. If you visited me before, you'll know this will make an appearance, but you could kind of put that on there with some Wink of Stella. Or I have a little container here of shimmer paint and alcohol that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell the shimmer paint anymore, but you can get it from other craft companies. So I just have a little shimmer paint and alcohol, and I'm just going to spray it because it's going to be a little bit of a time saver as opposed to brushing all that Wink of Stella on there. Okay? Okay. All right. So while that's drying, we have to do another something something here. Okay. We have our crinkled seam binding that's next on the list. And where's my scrap paper? So we're gonna take a piece of crinkled seam binding. And what I love about crinkled seam binding, I think it's one of the most versatile um, ribbons that um, Stampin' Up! has because what's cool is if you have some Stampin' Blends, you instantly can have ribbon in any color that you want. So I'm just gonna take my Petal Pink Dark Stampin' Blend and I am gonna color add some color to my crinkled seam binding so it coordinates with my card. And I just love this. It adds some great versatility to the white. You can make any color ribbon that you want. And another thing that I love is because these markers are alcohol-based markers, they kind of starch your ribbon a little bit. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to tie. So that's kind of cool too. The only thing you need to remember when you're coloring your ribbon is protect your work surface underneath like I'm doing because it will go through. And because these are alcohol inks, they will stain whatever's underneath. So just protect your work surface and then give them a moment to dry. Um, it's not, they don't take too terribly long to dry because they're alcohol based, but especially when you're working with some, you know, reds and dark greens and stuff like that. Um, if they're not completely dry before you start tying them, you're going to get it all over your fingers and you run the risk of it getting on your card too. So I hope this is enough ribbon for a bow. I'm going to do just a little more. I'd rather have too big of a piece than not enough. So, so that's a fun tip if you don't know with your Stampin' Blend markers. You can also use them to color rhinestones and pearls. So that kind of makes them very functional in your craft room. So we're going to let that dry. And it's really hard to see, but see how it's just kind of like, it looks almost starchy, whereas the other ribbon is a little more now, I don't want to say flimsy, but it's a little more delicate. And this kind of feels like it's starched a little bit. So it makes it really easy to tie, which is another thing I like too. So, so just that is a fun little tip for you with Stampin' Blend markers and 
ribbon and you can do that with any ribbon. So, oh, Anne says she's never seen anyone colored ribbon. Looks great. Good, I'm glad you like that tip. Okay, let me move the stamp out of the way. Now we're gonna start assembling the card front. So what I'm going to do for starters is I'm going to layer up our cute little guys here, okay? So my bow is gonna land at the base of this. So that is where I'm gonna put my glue dots. So I'm just gonna put a little glue dot and layer up these little guys here. And I'm just gonna twist and turn them a little bit. Oh, now the other one's snoring. Boy, these dogs have a really hard life, you guys. All they do is sleep and play. <laughs> and eat, <laughs> and, and eat for sure. Okay, oh my gosh, I'm having the hardest time getting these off. The <laughs> glue dots don't wanna come off today. Okay, so we're just kind of layering these up. So see how it just kind of, we just bulked it up a little bit, made it kind of fun, and um, just really kind of brought some life to these little ferns. And I love how the golden rose gold just really makes them pop. I hope you do too. Um, normally I would do some, where are my tweezers? Here they are. Normally I would do some glue on the back of this, but I think I'm gonna use, well, I say in theory, I'm gonna use these mini glue dots, but they're a little big. Mm, I might use some glue. Okay, so I'm just gonna place a couple dots of liquid glue, very minimal dots to just get it to adhere to the card. You could do glue dots if you wanted to. You might have to fold them over a little bit, um, but you notice I'm not using very much, just little dots just to adhere it. Okay, light hands with your liquid glue, that always works best. Okay, now I'm going to, I gotta get this right on the first try or I'm gonna make a mess. So I'm going to adhere it to my card like so. So pretty, right? Doesn't it look pretty with the gingham and the birch, like it's, or the, yeah, not birch. What's it called? Timber timber embossing folder. So it's all just kind of coming together. See how all those random things just kind of, I don't know, they all kind of worked out a little bit. And now to squeak in our sentiment. So for starters, I'm going to layer my sentiments um, or these two banners together. So hi, Janie, nice to see you there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of adhere these two little banners together and notice how there's just going to be a little pop of that gold and I'm keeping that one just a little bit longer than the other one for some added dimension okay and these are too long so we're going to cut them never fear the key now is going to be to tuck them where they're kind of tucked under <laughs> we still need to be able to read them though. Um, we're going to kind of get it tucked under the fern a little bit, but we might have to tuck it. That piece might need to go. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to lose a little bit of the fern, but that's okay. So we're going to kind of tuck it there, but the goal is going to be that the ribbon kind of covers that gap. So if we can't do it, well, we might not be able to do it. We might have to do a double bow, you guys. Um, actually, you know what? We are gonna do a double bow because I don't think I'm gonna be able to cover that up with just a single bow. So you're gonna have to watch me color another piece of seam binding. And that's okay, right? Let's do another one about the same length. I was gonna do the double bow and then I got lazy and I said, no, I'll just do the single bow. And now I know why I wanted to do the double bow. <laughs> So let's color another piece of seam binding, shall we? Just reinforce that tip about coloring your seam binding with your Stampin' Blend markers. 
and it doesn't take very long. So, so what are you guys thinking? Are you loving this little mashup? Would you have put, would you have pulled all these items together? I just think it's kind of fun to see what you come up with. That's my challenge to everybody watching this weekend to go into your craft room and challenge yourself to pull some things that don't go together, sit down with them and see what you create. Cause I just think that's super, super fun. Okay. Let that dry for a moment. Let me put some Stampin' Dimensionals on this banner. We'll get that adhered in the process. Chelsea says, never, I'm not that creative. Chelsea, I bet you are creative. I bet you are. <laughs> Try it. You never know what'll happen. Whenever people say I'm not that creative, I always say, I bet you are. Because it's in it's, it's all in there somewhere. Um, <laughs> and have some fun. That's the important part when it when it comes to stamping and paper crafting. Just have fun with it. There are no rules. You can always just kind of create something fun. Okay. I know I'm missing a couple comments, and I promise I'm not ignoring you guys. I will go back after and watch them. I really just don't want to cover that rose gold up, so I'm trying to make it work if I can. But I can't cover the sentiment because the you have to be able to read this whole sentiment. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, you know, we'll see what happens with this as I lay the bow down. If it is a little per, oh wait, here, I might be able to fix it. There. I just kind of moved it a little bit. Since I put these all on with glue dots, you can move it with <laughs> your finger, so. And another thing that we'll probably do after, I won't make you watch me do that, but I will probably go and just pop in a couple glue dots on this rose gold piece just to kind of give it a little more stability. So Shirley says, trust me, she is creative. <laughs> See, we're, it's, we're all creative in our own way, right? Okay. And I, like I said, guys, I'm looking and I know I missed a ton of comments, but I don't want to get too derailed. So I'm going to tie a double bow. I promise I'll go back. I promise. Oh, I always like to tie my bows off camera because I'm so fussy with them, but it's okay. You're just, you're just going to have to watch me tie it today. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, my stomach just growled. Did you hear that? Um, not that you want to hear that, but, and I don't know why I'm not hungry. It's just being a little fussy today. Okay. And trust me when I tell you, um, when we colored this with the Stampin' Blends markers and how I told you it kind of like starches your ribbon a little bit, it makes it so much easier to tie. Trust me on that. If you've never done it with Stampin' Blends the first time you'll do it, you'll go, oh my gosh, yeah, this is way easier to tie. Um, okay, so I'm just floofing my ribbon, and that's a technical term. And we're going to pop this. I am going to be able to cover it. Okay. If your, my banner piece here is still just a smidge too long. So I'm going to take the tiniest little bit off. Perfect. That'll do it. So now when I lay my ribbon down, you kind of won't be able to see the edge of it. And if you do, that's fine. I always say if your recipient is looking that closely at your cards and they notice that, oh my gosh, just a little bit of that edge is sticking out. My rule of thumb is they never get another handmade card from you. <laughs> so I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. But it's handmade. It can't always be perfect. Although I strive for perfection. I always strive for it. This might be, the ribbon might be a little too big, but you know what, guys? We're just going to make it work. I think it's, I think it's going to work. 
Okay, and then we'll, again, I don't know why I'm fluffing these because when I, by the time I mail them, they're not going to be fluffy anymore. So if you share the video and get drawn, and get, if you win this card, just fluff your bow when it comes out of the envelope. And just know, I, I fluffed it, but the USPS is not always kind. So, <laughs> okay, we'll trim off our edges. And I just love that if you don't have any petal pink ribbon, guess what? Now you do. You have any color you want as long as you have Stampin' Blends that match. So, but we're not done yet, guys. And like I mentioned, I'll probably just angle that a little bit so I can still see my whole sentiment and everything, but it'll work. It'll work for now. But we have to do two things before we wrap this up. And then our hodgepodge card is complete. We need champagne rhinestone basic jewels. We're going to move these into the mix. I love champagne rhinestones. I especially love them with anything petal pink. They're always my go-to whenever I use petal pink because I just think you can just never truly have enough sparkle on a card. And they, they coordinate so nicely with petal pink. Um... Okay, mm, this might be a five rhinestone card, guys. I always have to do my embellishments in odd numbers, and three just doesn't feel like enough. I don't know, five might feel like too many. We're going to stick with three. But I might make that a big one. No, I like it little. Okay, I'm done. I'm done farting around with that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And last but certainly not least, we have to do the inside. So I took another coordinating pattern from that Tea Boutique paper. See how it's that bright pattern on one side? And I just went and used another petal pink. This is about a three-quarter inch strip. It's three quarters by four. And then I have a piece of basic white that is five and a quarter inches by four inches or yeah five and a quarter by four for the inside of my card and I I, I don't think I'm going to stamp anything on the inside because I am giving the card away so that gives the recipient the opportunity to add something if they want to or um but I may cut another I might cut another one of these in gold and maybe add it in there. So we'll see. There'll probably be something more in there, but always dress up the inside of your cards. That's the moral of the story. Um, <laughs> so, but we'll keep it pretty simple for now. Like I said, since I'm giving it away, I don't like to do too much because if the person wants to write in it, they have that option, or if they have a sentiment they'd like to use, they can stamp it. But. Just add a nice little layer on the inside. And always make sure you're doing this when you make your card. Don't think you're going to go back and do it later. Because I have so many cards that I'm like, oh, I'll just do the inside later. And you know what ends up happening? I have a pile of 300 cards that don't have insides. So then when you have to sit down and do it all later, you have to seek out the DSP again, the stamp set again. So just always do it when you make your card. Don't ever think you're going to do it later because you won't. Um, <laughs> all right. I actually might add some mini Stampin' Dimensionals behind a couple pieces here and here just to kind of pop that up. But what do you guys think? So if you're just tuning in, this was our mix-up, mash-up medley card that we made today. So I took the Artistically Ink stamp set, Forever Flourishing Dies, Timber Embossing Folder, Tea Boutique Paper, and rose gold and gold paper. All of this that doesn't even coordinate together in the catalog, and that's what I came up with today. So what do you guys think? <laughs> I, uh, if you love it, I would love it if you would push the heart button, because that always makes me really happy, and it's a nice way to end a video. So um, I hope you guys love it, and I'll fiddle with this bow just a little bit more. Um, <laughs> 
I gotta fluff it. It drives me crazy if I don't. But anywho, that's what we came up with. And I encourage you guys, this rose gold and gold specialty paper, um, yeah, I think it's an overlooked item in the um, Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And I think it's like a sleeper. It's really pretty. And I don't know, I just think it adds just some really cool detail and that little pop under the banner. It just, it adds more sparkle in person. So keep that in mind. So there you go, guys. That's our card for today for Mashup Medley Friday. I hope you love it. And um, I encourage you, go into your craft room this weekend, pull some stuff out that doesn't coordinate and see what you come up with, okay? So thank you so much for joining me for Facebook Friday. I am so happy you guys are here today. If you're watching the replay, definitely say hi and let me know you're here. And I will post this over on YouTube um, later tonight or tomorrow. And I'll probably have measurements for the card posted in the um, description of the video too, even though I shared them a little bit earlier. So there we go, guys. Thank you so much. Have an awesome, awesome day out there. Have a great weekend and stay cool because I know there's a heat wave this weekend in a lot of parts of the country. So I hope you all stay cool. Happy stamping. And I will be back to talk to you next week for another creative card. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.